Okay. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how we find halves of numbers, thirds of numbers, and fourths or quarters of numbers. And I'm going to try to use pictures to illustrate how that goes along with the fractions of a whole that we've been talking about earlier. So I'm going to use a picture to show you how I might think about half of each of these numbers. Now some of them are quite easy to solve in your head, but we're going to illustrate them anyway. So uh, I like to, if I'm looking for a half, I'll just draw a fraction that shows a half. Right? Just like that. And if I know I have two pieces, then I know I have to share those between each piece. So this couldn't be easier. I'm going to put one here and one here. And I know that half of two is whatever is in one of these. So in this case, it's just one. And I can always double check that by adding one plus one together and making sure that that equals the number that I start with. And that shows us that we do indeed have a half. We can do the exact same thing with four. So I'm gonna just draw a little fraction picture. It doesn't even matter what uh, shape or illustration you use. I could use a circle, I'm just gonna show half. Now I need to share four into two equal groups. So I can just count them up and I go one, two, three, four. So I know I have four all together. I can easily see just by looking that they have the same amount in them. And then I know that one half of that is whatever's in one of those. In this case, that equals two. So the first one I have one, here we have two. And again, I can double check by showing two plus two is equal to four. Last one, 10. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a bigger box. And I'm gonna cut this one like a triangle sandwich. Still equal parts. And again, I'm just gonna put 10 items into those, splitting them equally between the two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've counted to 10 and I can double check. One, two, three, four, five in that. One, two, three, four, five in that. So they're equal. And then I know that half of 10 equals five, and we can do our check. Five plus five does equal 10. Okay, so now let's take a look at third. And we're gonna use the exact same trick as we used for halves, but when we draw a picture this time, we will use uh, divided into three instead of divided into two parts. So I want to first find one third of three, or another way to think of this is if three people needed to share three items. So again, we can solve this quickly in our heads, but we're going to use the picture just for the exercise. So I have three items and I'm going to share them into three groups. So one, two, three items. One third of that is going to equal one of those groups. So I'm just going to highlight one in that group I have one, so one third of three equals one. And this time, if I wanna find out if I've got the right answer, then I need to add the number together three times because I have three groups of one. So I can say one plus one plus one does equal three, which is the number we started with. So that checks out. Let's try the same thing with one third of 12. And you'll notice here I've used the number notation and here I've used word notation. Either is fine, uh, you can expect to see both. So I'm going to make myself a bigger box to fit 12. I'm going to divide it into three equal parts. So two lines, one, two, and now I need to share out 12 items. So let's count to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Very easy to tell just by looking that those groups are equal. And if I have one third, then altogether I have one, two, three, four. So that equals four. And I'm not gonna have room to write it, but four plus four plus four a third time does indeed equal 12. So that checks out. Now let's check this one out, one third of 10. So I'll start with the same picture. One line, two lines to give me three boxes. Now let's count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So here we have a problem. 
um, and that is, as you may notice, the groups are not equal. I have one group of four and two groups of three, which means that the number 10 can't be shared equally among three, meaning we can't actually show one third of 10, at least not using whole numbers. If you were using fractions or decimals, uh, sorry, just decimals, uh, or perhaps percentages, that would work. But for what we're doing with whole numbers, we can't show one third of 10 because we can't break this one down into smaller parts to share between. Okay, by now you should know exactly what to expect. But I'm gonna work through these examples just like the previous ones, and I'm gonna to try to show you some connections that you can make with the first ones. Um, fourths and halves especially have some interesting common properties. So let's take a look. I'm looking for one fourth of four this time. We'll remember that half of four from the first example is two. So if I put four in this uh, fraction that shows halves, each part has two. And if I want to show fourths, all I have to do is chop those halves in half once more. So you notice that in this picture, we see that a quarter is a half of a half. And in the same way, the numbers work out. So a half of four is two, and then a half of two. If we have one fourth, we have one of those pieces. So one quarter of four equals one. And the way we check this, just like the previous ones, is we have to add all those parts together to see if we end up with our original number. So one plus one plus one plus one does indeed equal four. So this checks out. Let's take a look at the second one, one fourth of 12. So this time let's go circle. And I'm gonna start this time by dividing this into fourths. So in half, and then half again, and I'm just gonna use the counting strategy for this one. I'm gonna count up to 12 and divide it evenly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We notice that those all have an equal number in them. So this is indeed a fraction and one fourth of 12 or one of those parts equals three. And this time, instead of adding, I'm gonna do something else. So three groups of four um, actually clues us into a multiplication idea. So groups of is another thing that we can say when we see that multiplication symbol. And three groups of four does equal 12. And the other thing we can remember is that when we have two numbers multiplied, you can always switch them and get the same answer. Let's use a picture to quickly show that. So if I had instead of three groups of four, or I'm sorry, if I had, instead of four groups of three, I had three groups of four. So say I had a fraction in thirds and I had the same number, 12. Well, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So three groups of four equals 12 in the same way that four groups of three equals 12. It's a little bit of a side note, but it's really useful to see how fractions and multiplication and division are all connected and all the same ideas. Hopefully seeing them with pictures will help with that. So let's take a look at the very last example now. One fourth or one quarter of 20. So again, let's start with a picture. And let's start like we noticed in the first one with a half. Uh, hopefully you remember that half of 20 is 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put 10 in each of these sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So if I remember that a quarter is just half of a half, then I know that half of 20 is 10, and half of 10 is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those groups are all equal. So 1 quarter of 20 is 5. And again, we're gonna use skip counting to check this as well. So if I skip count by five, four times, then I'm gonna go five, 10, 15, 20, or five, 10, 15, 20. So I know that this is correct because I can check it by going backwards and doing the multiplication.